Hey gamers, it's Wintermute here from Grind This Game, and this is going to be a uh, natural gas power guide. And I got my base here in the center, and I've, after you've kind of searched the map and explored out, you'll eventually find one of these uh, natural gas geysers, which you can use a scientist to analyze. And then once you've analyzed it, you can you can get some details about it. If you look in here, you can see natural gas. It's making 400 grams per second at 150 degrees and there's an eruption period uh, 431 seconds out of every 949 and then an active period when it's uh, active and then when it's dormant now it'll keep spewing gas while it's in its active cycle until it kind of gets to five kilograms per uh, per tile of pressure in here it's pretty close to it right now and then it'll kind of get uh, saturated so I built a uh, liquid lock here I've kind of prepared things and in my tutorial series uh, part four number four which uh, I'll link to the playlist of the entire guide in the description but the, I built this liquid lock here and kind of a backup airlock to prevent the natural gas from kind of squirting out of this area if we just use a regular airlock uh, because of the high pressure in here you'll get natural gas squirting out and going all over the place which you don't want so it's pretty easy to set up this liquid lock, liquid lock. And then once you have it set up, um, I'm going to use debug mode just for this tutorial because it's a bit quicker. But I'm going to start to build out uh, what I do for the natural gas setup. It's not the only way to do it. but So you'll need a gas pump. Uh, you can build it at the top or the bottom, whichever you feel comfortable with. I usually just stick it at the bottom. So you're going to need that. And then you're going to need a power source. I usually do coal close by. So I'll do a cold generator here and I'm going to use a smart battery. By this point you probably have a smart battery already. And then I'm going to set up a power line along here and into here. Now when I first started out I had a bit of chlorine in here so you may want to put a gas filter and it, just in case you have mixed gases in there. So if you use a gas filter, I'm gonna put one right here. And then I'll also put some automation, an automation wire between the smart battery and the coal generator and set the smart battery to 50% or so. And also set the coal generator to uh, a high priority so the dupes come along and uh, add some coal to it. That, will, that way we'll get a little bit of power in this in this system. Now you don't have to use coal, you could use a, a manual generator uh, just fine. But coal is usually pretty plentiful. So I'm going to hook that up to the filter. Then we're going to need a pipe to move this out. And I, I usually use a regular gas pipe that's made out of abyssalite, just in case there's a lot of heat trapped in here. If, we, if we're moving hot gas along here and we use something like granite or sandstone, the heat will kind of escape and it might heat up the surrounding area. So we'll just use a pump along here. We'll go into the input of the filter, which is the white input. And then the orange output is the filtered output. So I already had a line here with natural gas. We'll just connect that. And then the third line is everything else. So I'll just put a line out here and we'll just put everything else right here. Now it seems like it's pretty much all natural gas in here, so uh, that should be fine. So now it's actually pumping. Looks good. And we have to actually select our filtered output, which is going to be natural gas. Just click it. That looks good. That's got power. And then you would just build a pipe uh, out of regular gas pipe out of abyssalite, like I said. If you don't mind the heat escaping, you could use a regular granite or sandstone and I'm going to bring this along here and this is where I'm going to do my natural gas power generation so I have a little trough here where I'm going to collect the polluted water because let's just see here when we build a natural gas generator you can see that it's it takes in natural gas 90 grams per second uh, it dribbles out polluted water it also gives off carbon dioxide and 800 watts of power and it gives off quite a bit of heat so I'm going to build one of those right here. I'm actually going to build two. You might want to leave some space in between them for cooling. So I'll do that with that with these two. 
and let's hook up that natural gas line so we'll bring it up here and we'll put it in the input there put it in the input input there and then there's a gas output of co2 so we'll just to make a line like this as well now i like to leave a, leave a little bit of space so that um you could make a pipe along right here but i like to go up a little bit just so it uh, has a little bit of kind of buffering room it's not necessary i don't think but and for now i'm just going to dump the gas out right here that means the co2 will collect here and kind of sink to the bottom and you could send it down to the bottom of the map to a slickster room slicksters are little creatures that eat co2 or you could use a uh, co2 scrubber under oxygen there's a co2 skimmer sorry and also in the part four of my guide i'll show you how to build a carbon skimmer i'll show it very briefly uh down here in the base right here so it takes in clean water uh gives off polluted water and i'm sending it through a filter here and i also have a little sensor here just to check for the pressure so that'll remove co2 as it kind of collects in here but like i said it's in part four of the tutorial so check that out there'll be a link in the description so back up here now I usually use a uh, heavy watt wire for my power plants. So under wire, you've got your heavy watt wire. You've also got heavy conductive wire. Both are able to carry 20 kilowatts of power. I use the heavy watt wire because it's cheaper. It, it, you can use regular metals with it. Um, the heavy conductive wire uses refined metals, which is a bit more expensive. So for now, I'll just use heavy watt wire I'll connect this up along here. So this will be our kind of our main grid. And I'm going to use a heavy watt joint plate right here. And kind of carry this along up here. So it's actually running now and it's actually wasting natural gas because it's not hooked up to any batteries or anything. So I'll just pause. And under power, you can see there's a transformer. There's a small transformer and there's a regular transformer. And if you click on these, you can see the small transformer has a power capacity of 1,000 joules. And the regular power transformer, which requires refined metal, has a power capacity of 4 kilojoules or 4,000 joules. Now, I always always use the, the bigger one. Um, you can use the small one if your power demands are really low. And I'll just kind of do an example setup here. I'll set one up right here. And we'll hook the heavy watt wire up to the left side. And you can kind of see the big bolt means the kind of heavy input. And the down here is the small output. It's the light output. And on the other light side, you could use a regular wire if you're, if you're only putting one kilowatt worth of stuff on it. But I like to use the conductive wire, which is two kilowatts. So we'll send that along here. And I'll connect it, connect it up to a fridge here and a light and a few other fridges just to have a heavy power demand on this thing. And you want to put a battery on the other side, the light side. And I like to use a smart battery. So I'll put one right here. That'll charge up. But what you want to do is you want to set up some automation wire between the smart battery and your natural gas generators. And you want to set your smart battery to something like 50%. Now the reason you do this is that uh, it'll conserve your natural gas. So the battery will get charge up to 50% and we'll shut off your natural gas generator so it's not wasting power. Now we can see with just this small transformer, we're not we're getting brownouts. We're not getting enough power. So some power is flowing to the battery, but because we have so much demand on this on this line, it's not really working. So instead of the small one, I'm going to use the big one. So let's go under power. Like I said, I almost always use the the large transformer. Oops, uh, let's delete that wire right there because we don't really need it. So now it's actually working, it's functioning properly. 
We can see our battery filling up. The natural gas generators are running. And then it'll turn off. Based on how how charged the battery is. That way it will conserve the natural gas power. Now I'm going to delete some of these fridges just to r reduce the demands on the circuit. And so we can actually see this thing in action. So now that the battery is fully charged, this becomes disabled. That's saving us from burning up our natural gas. And then the battery's, the battery's getting drawn down, goes below 50%, and it turns the automation on, so the natural gas fires back up. So this will do a bunch of things. It'll save your natural gas. It'll save heat being generated by these natural gas generators. And it's just generally a good system. Now I used to put my batteries on this side of the circuit, on the big side of the circuit, and you can do that. You could, you could, for instance, put a smart battery right here and hook your automation up here, and then this would kind of be a buffer for the whole rest of the system. The only downside of doing this is that your transformer is going to always be on, and it's going to be generating heat. So it's a bit of a trade-off. Having it on the sides a little bit more efficient in terms of heat generation. Now you want to build this natural gas power plant somewhat close to your base. Otherwise, uh, you're going to have to lead a wire really far. I've, I've built it too far away for this, but I, like the base is down here. So I would probably put my natural gas power plant right in here. And that way, the, uh, the wires could be led into the base much more easily. Just realized my base is running out of oxygen, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, so if I had a whole bunch of natural gas power plants here, let's say I had a, another uh, setup here, another transformer with a heavy watt wire. I could have a second circuit that went off and fed to my base. That way I could power 4,000 watts of stuff. I could do something like this. And that would be a secondary circuit for other stuff. And we would need a smart battery on that side as well, hooking up into the automation. The nice thing about putting the smart battery on this side of the circuit is that you only need one really, and that, that kind of buffers the whole thing. But like I said, the downside is heat generation from this uh, transformer. So for now, I'll just take that one away because we're not actually using it. Now you're going to get polluted water collecting that drips out of this little nozzle right here and I usually build a regular tile below it so that polluted water collects right here that'll help cool down your the water will help cool down your natural gas generators and then you can have like one little um, mesh tile and the liquid can flow through down into a kind of a little basin and then you would probably want to build a pump and take that polluted water off to somewhere else to uh, either filter into clean water or to use polluted water for plants or whatever because this will this water level will slowly rise now the nice thing about the polluted water that comes out of this is that there's no germs so if, it, if you're using it for food uh, after you filter it it can work out pretty nicely now you don't need to build heavy watt wire like this and transformers you could have a wire directly out of the natural gas um, generator and send that off to your base. But if you're building like a power grid for a really big base, I, I recommend this. Now I've only used two here. Um, this geyser is probably good for two or three natural gas generators depending on the dormancy and all this stuff. You could do some calculations to figure out exactly how much you could power. But it also depends on the power demands on this end, like how many power consumers you have. So it's easier just to build one or two, see how things go, and then if you find that your natural gas is getting all used up in here, you probably built too many. Now there's one thing I missed I should note. You should put some automation in here, or you can put some automation in here with an Atmo sensor right beside the pump and connect that with a automation wire. And then set it to something like, uh, if it's above 200 grams, enable the pump 
Because if you have heavy power demands and you're using up all this natural gas, you don't want the pump running non-stop if there's like hardly any natural gas in here. I'd like to leave a, a decent amount of room in here. This, that, this way we get like a lot of natural gas kind of buffering up. It serves as a storage tank. If you leave too small a room, then you'd need a... It's, it acts as, this acts as a bit of a battery in a sense. So there's one other thing about uh, heavy watt wire is that it has a really bad decor. The uh, regular heavy watt wire is worse than the conductive heavy watt wire. Let's just see here. Heavy watt wire has a minus 25 decor for a six tile radius. And the heavy conductive wire, it carries the same amount of power, but it has a minus 20 decor for four tile radius. So it's a little less uh, offensive, but it costs uh, refined metal, which is kind of expensive. So what you can do is build your power plant kind of away from where the dupes usually hang out. So if this was my power plant, I might put a little uh, access point along here so that they never have to see this. Once it's built, you can kind of keep them out of there so that they're not seeing all that bad decor. Like if they have to run by to go here often and run through here, it's going to not going to keep them very happy. One other thing I should mention is that the the temperature of the polluted water that comes out of these is based on the temperature of the natural gas geyser itself. And these things do heat up and give off quite a bit of heat. So you might want to put some like wheeze warts in here. I usually put wheeze warts in between each one. So let's plant one right there. And I would probably plant one right here as well, but I'm kind of out of them at the moment. And let's say that would get these down to, I don't know, a lower temperature, and then the water that comes out will be a lower temperature. But chances are you're going to be filtering this water uh, into clean water, and the sieve has a fixed output temperature. If you go into refinement, the water sieve has a fixed output temperature of 40 degrees. So there's not much point getting this, you know, too... Uh, too cold but some people like to cool this right down to like icy temperatures to keep their power grid nice and frozen which is which can be fine if you're lucky enough to have a cold biome next to your base you could build your power plant in there and that'll keep it cool for a very long time so I think that pretty much covers the uh, basics of the natural gas power generator it's a nice clean somewhat clean way of producing power and the nice benefit is that you get polluted water, which can be turned into clean water, which can be turned into oxygen. So natural gas is, in a sense, a source of indirect source of oxygen or water, depending on what you need, what your needs are. Now, the each map will have at least one of these, and sometimes you'll get two of them. And usually, once I find the second one, I I do a long natural gas pipe to my main power grid, just to consolidate it all in one place. So I want to keep this episode pretty short and concise. I'll be doing future guides in other topics soon. But I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found it useful. Uh, if you've got any feedback, uh, please leave it in the comments. Because uh, this is not necessarily an optimal setup. But uh, as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.